morning and welcome to the live series straight off the bat i don't know if it's too late but i'm gonna say it i'm gonna be that person happy new year i mean new year means different things to different people so i'm hoping that 2023 has treated you so well and there's so much more great things for you to come so today uh we're here straight off the bat where on thursdays we speak to individuals across multiple industries who will help you understand financial literacy and education if you're joining us from youtube thank you so much don't forget to smash that like button and follow our page to continue seeing content that will help you manage your money i'm your host Pauline Joseph, and today we're discussing electronic check clearing and what you should know with Karen Tom Yu. Now, you may be thinking, what does this have to do with me? Trust me, when it comes to information, I think you're better off with it than without it. So stick around. We're here with Karen. She is the general manager of uh, Group Marketing and Communications of RBL, Republic Bank Limited. She has more than 20 years of managerial experience so i feel like she's gonna give us so much insight into the evolution of this discussion uh she also holds uh honors from the university of london an international mba in finance and a bsc management honors from the university of west indies she also enjoys all things carnival and i want you guys to know that she is technically on holiday but she has given us her time. So let's try and squeeze out as much information as possible for the next 52 minutes. So Karen, join us, where are you? <laughs> Hi, morning everyone. Hi Pauline, thanks for having us on the show. I mean, you said happy new year. I will say happy carnival, it's that kind of week. So I hope we're all having a safe, wonderful season, whatever we're doing and I'm very happy to be here. That is a good point because for some people, the new year may be when carnival starts. So yes, happy carnival to everyone. Okay, so let's get into this discussion because, you know, from my perspective, when I think about checks, I'm like, ah, I have to figure out how to write my sign, my how to sign the same way every single time. And it just frustrates me and it's like, ah, what, is, what does this have to do with anything? So for the British discussion for those out there who are just joining us, what is the electronic check clearing? Electronic check clearing is a, an industry-wide system um, that, that went live about a week and a half ago. Um, it's been in train for quite some time and really, very simply put, what it does is, is, is alter the way the banks share check information with each other. Um, historically, um, and as recently as two weeks ago, what would have happened? Um, Pauline, you would have written a check. This check would have been presented at, at X Bank. Um, X Bank would have then exchanged the physical check with, with whoever your bank is, whoever the check is drawn on. Um, and that would have been the process, a physical exchange of checks. What is happening now, all of the checks are being, the images are being captured electronically, the checks are being scanned. And during the course of the, of, of, of the processing time, the banks are exchanging images, image files of the checks for, for, for credit, for the credit or debit to, to persons' accounts. That's it in a nutshell. It's really the replacement of a, of a physical manual system with an automated electronic one. So, when it comes to just the, the behind the scenes of what happens or what would have happened before that is I would have funds in my account. I would go to an organ, uh, uh, you know, transaction or commerce transaction. I would write my check. So what would happen for us who don't know, don't know what's going on in the back end of things, what usually happens? What would have happened in the back end is you would write a check to me for a million dollars. And I'd say, thank you very much, Pauline. Um, oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> then I would take that check and deposit it into, into my account at Republic Bank. Assuming you bank at another bank, what would then have to happen is the physical check that I have, no, I have in my possession that I have deposited at Republic Bank now has to be well, that's happening across the board, right? So all the checks that are processed in, in a given day, in one given day, would in the past have been collected, um, scrutinized, sorted, disaggregated in a, to, to each bank and then sent to each bank. So assuming you bank, your, your, your bank was Bank X, um, all of the checks that Republic Bank 
had to process on tonight, on tonight for, let's say, use today as, as the example, would that that are specific to Bank X would have gone back to them the following day for them to then start doing the, the processing in terms of um, a, a, a debiting your account or putting a hole or whatever, as the case may be. So that's what, that's what would have happened. And now it's shift over now because that time frame, what would have happened would have taken how much time? That the, the exchange happened overnight. Um, and then what would have happened is your, your, your account would be impacted the following day. What's going to happen now is because the banks are processing, um, are processing electronically, the, the, the time frame is faster because there's no need for a physical exchange of, of, of checks. So persons' accounts are going to be impacted. Um, I wouldn't definitely not real time, but in a shorter time frame. Uh, the intent, of course, is for us to hopefully get to the stage of, of um, it being real time. But I mean, we're away away from that because what would have to happen is all of the comply, all of the checks in the system would have to be compliant. And as at now, not all of the checks in issue are compliant. And uh, for you know, I've, I've experienced this in the past, and I've seen it sometimes on movies where somebody would write a check and be like, "Don't cash it till Friday." Yeah. How is that going to change that type of behavior? Oh no, well, it, it really wouldn't because I mean, if you gave me the million dollar check and told me don't cash it to, to Friday, then remember the check still has to get into the system. So if I hold the check and don't, and, and if I as nothing would change with that scenario because that's a matter of me actually having the check in my possession and making a decision when to when to deposit the check which would which which this system isn't going to impact okay good to know guys you heard it here first so when it comes to this process that you would have discussed in the past earlier um why is this claim process uh being changed well i mean the the real benefits at this point will be the ability to have well, okay so but some background right over the past maybe year and a half to two years the banks in the system have been encouraging all of their customers who have check accounts checking accounts to exchange their checks and change them to the to the i, I referenced something earlier the compliant a compliant format check these checks are laid out in a particular way printed on a particular paper um and the real the real benefit of it is the ability to use the scanning capabilities to pick up fraudulent checks or errors in checks etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's much more efficient it's much quicker um so it really does protect all players in the market from from things like like bad bad like fraudulent checks in particular so that's one benefit i mean you also now have um once the system gets going and you have everything captured electronically just like everything else, it's easier to then go back and, and no pun intended, and check on an, on, a, on, a, on an item that may have been issued historically, because you will now have electronic files exchanged. So it will be easier for the for the bank to, to go for banks to go back and look, you know, a week back, two weeks back, a month back, and, and locate an item as opposed to now with all the physical items. It's a it's a it's a more manual and, and tedious process, and it takes longer, you know. So I, I like this conversation um, uh, about compliance because it, since we've started this show, <laughs> it's been almost two years now, um, I've learned a lot because I'm also a customer and at times we get frustrated. It's like, why you need to have all this information for? This is just too much is happening. Um, but at the same time, you speak about fraud. You know, so let's talk about this compliance conversation and why it's important to understand why all of these steps are needed. Well, I mean, a large part, I mean, writing a check is intuitively, if you think of what the process involves, it's a much, the, the process lends itself more to things going wrong than, than someone, um, electronically transferring funds from one to another. I mean, at the end of the day, a checkbook can get lost. A check can be altered. Someone could could, could do all sorts of things if they have access to a physical check. Um, 
And even if they don't, and I said, you issue a check to someone, they can alter it. There, there are many, many ways that someone who want, who you know, who had um, bad intentions could could negatively a customer's account and have access and do all sorts of things in the check writing process. So the importance of having these these checks um, recertified and, and issued in, associ- in in accordance with the Canadian Payments Association standard which is an international gold standard for for security features on checks does does you know goes a long way to help mit- mitigate and minimize that I like the fact that you brought up the Canadian Payment Association standards and uh, I want you to elaborate a little bit more on you know what it what exactly that is and and how that aligns with this discussion around electronic check clearing okay sure um, so the, the Canadian Payments Association, like I said, it's the it's the international benchmark for um, check security. It, there are several features that people who issue checks would have realized would have changed in the look, feel, layout of your checks over the past 18 months. So they, they need to be certain sizes. They need to have certain um, certain quality paper, which is not easily replicatable. The formats are standardized, date format. Um, the the site, like I said, there are there's information on the back of checks printed now that wasn't there previously. So when you're scanning the check, everything is captured. Um, and that's right. I mean, the rest of it is pretty technical in terms of how the checks are laid out. But suffice it to say, there is a standard format. So everyone in the industry's checks will look the same, which allows for easier detection of outliers right of, of, of anyone attempting to um to to, to, to again to, to, to access someone's check and, and and tamper with it or adjust it or even worse so can we talk a little bit about um this idea of what's required on the checks because you mentioned the date and i automatically think about how americans write their dates and how we write our dates Mm -hmm. and just the sort of standardization of what it means to write a check for somebody who may be looking at um actually getting their first check in account what should be what should they be mindful of when it comes to writing a check well now the good thing is because of how the checks are designed there's no ambiguity I mean, yes, as a rule in the Caribbean, we do day, month, day, month, year. Um, and the American standard is, is, the, is the reverse, right? Um, but the, it's actually spelled out on the check. If you look at it, how much, I mean, I wish I had a check to show you. Um, there, it goes, there are two Ds at the first two dots. So you know it has to be day. Then there are two Ms. In, you know, be, so you, you, you kind of, it guides you to not make those kind of, 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 um, of errors. And it guides you to a, to a place of standardization. So that's one one thing that people need to be mindful of. Um, the second thing is, I mean, while it's un, it's unusual, it's not it's not rare. Um, people would would write checks in red ink or pink ink or green ink. These two, the system will reject a check that isn't isn't written up in black or blue ink. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about it's it's all about making the checks as clear as possible, so that so that a a, a reader can pick it up and scan it easily. So that's really, those are the two main things I think customers who are writing checks need to be mind, minded of. But again, the checks themselves are laid out in a way that very clearly and easily guide anyone writing them on to how to, as to how, how to, how to write it out, how to fill it out and what goes with. All right. I think that is some very uh, valuable information when it comes to uh, both commercial and regular smegular clients like me. And I think those are conversations that uh, within an office, as especially if you have an organization, these, these types of information you need to share amongst your team because if you have more than one person writing a check, obviously you need to be mindful of the color of the ink. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to have a discussion about the impact that this electronic system is gonna have for you. Uh, So we'll be right back with Karen.
and welcome back to straight off the bat thank you so much for joining us today uh we are here really discussing financial literacy and education you know the drill uh if you're joining us for the first time on facebook thank you so much don't forget to subscribe to our page to continue seeing content that will help you manage your money today we are discussing what you should know about electronic check clearing we are here with karen and she is from rbl the general manager of group marketing and communications and i mean for a lot of folks they're like what is this all about because a lot of us are online but there's a, a lot of commercial uh, customers who are definitely using checks and this is the type of information i think your business should be chiming in on so we're gonna bring back karen and we're gonna have a discussion around the impact that this is going to have on customers because if you missed it earlier we discussed that it's very important for you to make sure and write those checks in black and blue guys black and blue so when it comes to uh having a checking account um you know there's some changes that are going to happen obviously there's uh, a time frame for these things to roll out but as we have Karen here today, we want to find out what type of impact this process is going to have for customers like you and I. So Karen, give us sort of like a, a summary of what to expect. Yeah, okay. So really the main change at this point is that in the past, gosh, we're getting some background noise, sorry. Yeah? Um, in, the, in the past, checks would have been physically exchanged between banks when they were presented. Um, so you would have written a check and it would have been to me and I would deposit it at my account, at my bank and the bank would collate all the checks and the following day, physical checks would be sent between the, all the banks in the system to allow them to, to, to begin processing to people's accounts. The main difference now is that the checks are going to be captured electronically where at the place that they're deposited and scanned with electronic files being exchanged between the banks overnight. Um, so it, is a, it, it will lend itself to faster um, and easier exchange of checks, um, much more efficient. Um, you know, what you, there, there should be no delays in, 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 in the exchange anymore, which sometimes could happen with a physical check. And it also, it also lends itself to, from a customer perspective, um, you know, a, le a, a level of security because the new checks that are in issue, that have been in, in issue for, for a little while now, um, are compliant with an international standard called the Canadian Payment Association Standard. And really, what, what, what we have done throughout the industry is change the look and feel of the checks to be standardized um, and less, less um, open to, to, to fraudulent interference from outsiders. Uh, not to worry about the noise. We know you are still on vacation, so we appreciate you. It, it brings some color to the conversation when the dog's on your back. It's fine. Um, thanks so much for sharing that. Shout out to Desiree. Haven't seen you since last year, girl. What up? <laughs> Desiree joins us on every live show, and we truly appreciate her support. Uh, and I want to talk about this conversation around time frame because I would see on tv american tv where people will take a picture of a check and then it's instantly deposited yeah. where are we there karen are we there yet <laughs> no we're not no we're definitely not there yet um i mean that is the end end game of the industry locally but we're not there yet i mean as an example right now um right now not all the checks in the system are compliant as a first step um, I, I mean, I don't have the percentages, but because they, they do vary across the banks, but not all customers have been able to exchange checks, their old checks for the new format. So that's a first massive step that needs to happen across the across the um, the industry for us to be able to speed up the entire process. As you would imagine, if if there are some, and and by some I mean in some instances, quite a quite a large percentage of of old version non-compliant checks still in circulation um what what the industry will have to do is run a hybrid system for the time being which doesn't lend itself to speeding up the process um additionally what you're referencing also has a, a feature that is not um you know at this point the the industry has not has not fleshed out which would be like an image capture and whatever security has to go in to making sure that the image capture 
is authentic and then the upload of that into a system for processing. So if you think of what is in place, I mean, it doesn't lend itself to that at this point. That's okay. I feel like in the next couple of years, we're going to reference, reference this conversation and we're like, yes, we pushed this forward. It's because of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what, I, what I would love us to push forward is, is everyone should be signing up for internet banking and really and truly, you know, write and check should, 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 as we go forward, become a thing of the past. There's so much, there's so much more efficient and, and self, 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 um, self, self, self-driven ways to make payments between everyone, you know? So that, that is really, I think, where, the, where the, the, can, the retail and business population needs to go. Agreed. I, I, um, I remember what headaches I had when it comes to writing checks for my business. I'm really not good at it because um, I remember uh, people would be calling me and be like, well, they're not taking my check because your signature doesn't look real. And I really haven't mastered that um, thing to write the check. So I, I, I could imagine that we'll get there eventually because I think when it comes to access to the phones and what the banks have been doing with online banking, we will get there. So for the discussion here, when it comes to um, the checks conversation and, and electronic side of it, what about folks who have customized checks? You know, because some people want to get fancy, they want to put their ad, you know, want to put like stuff on their checks, like their logo and things like that. How is this um, process going to change that customization? What what's going to happen for that customer? Yeah, banks have the banks have had to work with um, with customers who issue what we call special checks, but at Repo in Republic Bank, that's our our name for it. Um, um, to work with them to redesign their checks to to become compliant um, within the new standard and of course retain to the extent possible the the, the customized um, features. So it's not impossible. It just takes a little more work and it takes you know it takes individual collaboration with your 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 respective bank. It can be done. So so just to, to clarify, when it comes to the electronic check clearing would customers who have customized checks be affected by this process all customers issuing checks in the system will be will be impacted um but i mean just for context there uh, pauline you remember this is something that has been has been in the works for quite a while um so we most of the banks if not all of the banks in the system would have started exchanging checks with uh, exchanging checks with their um, customers over the last maybe year and a half to two years. So to the extent that, that, that a customer issued individual customized checks, they would have been, they ought to have been in discussion with their bank long before now to, to change the format um, you know in, a, in, anticip in anticipation of this thing going live, which it did approximately two weeks ago. All right, guys, you heard it here first, just in case you didn't hear it before. So get in touch with your bank and have that discussion. Karen, I just, um, I know, uh, kind of multitasking, but is it possible for you to close off your tabs? Because we're hearing the, um, yeah, sure. we'll the do. emails we'll coming in. I just saw the, yeah, just saw the note, yeah. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so we have um, a question from Hi, Philip. Uh, I want to touch on the question right now. As we speak about electronic alternatives, are uh, we really there as it per pertains to faster processing times by all commercial banks? Now, I know Karen is here under Republic Bank. She cannot speak on behalf of all banks, um, but I'm sure she can uh, contribute to this discussion. So uh, you want to chime in there? Yeah, sure. Um, well, um, I, thanks for your question. I mean, I'm seeing, I, I want to answer it in two ways. One is with specific reference to electronic alternatives. Um, and I will say that, that to, well, for Republic, from Republic Bank's perspective, use of our electronic alternatives, not checks, internet banking, mobile banking, does lend itself to real, almost real-time payment between accounts whether it be person to person or person to business or business to business um so i hope that that answers the first part 
as it relates to this discussion about the ele electronic check clearing system that went into effect, we haven't been able to eke out the benefit of faster processing time because, because not all checks in the system are compliant. Um, and again, that would that would require discussions with the regulator to adjust to adjust um, time frames for holding checks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the first phase is us having close to 100% of checks circulating in the system become compliant, um, and then we can take it in, in in phases in terms of shortening the processing time. But certainly, um, as an as an electronic alternative. Um, Online payments, mobile banking payments are real time, and 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 more more importantly, from a customer perspective, can be done at your convenience whenever. I can attest to that as a customer. I um, found online banking, and I never went back. <laughs> so I think it is definitely when it comes to options, the banks are giving that to you and you have an opportunity to look at both sides of making those payments. And obviously we do what's best for us as customers. And with the dis discussion around electronic check clearing, we, we looking at the impact of what it means for customers and what you need to do, um, spoiler alert, probably reach out to your bank. That's a good way to start. As well as there is a link in the comment section. If you are watching this on LinkedIn, we are definitely having it there in the comment section, uh, bat.org.tt slash electronic check clearing. So all the information is there where we're discussing today. And Karen is so kind enough to share her time today because she is on vacation, but not really. <laughs> um, so we discussed, you know, this is, electronic check clearing system as it relates to the changes that are expected, the impact that it's going to have, as well as compliance, which is something that we as customers don't appreciate. We just want everything right now, all the time. Um, so when it comes to the electronic check clearing, what does that mean cost-wise for a customer, Karen? Do we have to be like, oh my, something else I have to pay for again? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, well, I can, again, I'm from Republic Bank. I can speak for us. We have not adjusted the cost of our checks from what they were before. Um, so from a, from a Republic Bank customer perspective, there would be no difference in cost. Having some issues there. Oh, great. That is fantastic information to hear, guys. Um, and I think that we have a question from Nerfeti. Ram Kisun, but I don't think it's going to be relevant um, because it has to do with another bank and I don't want to put Karen on the spot. She cannot speak on behalf of other banks. What I will suggest to you is you reach out to your um, banker and have those discussions. But I, I think from a time frame perspective, you, you would have missed this electronic clearing conversation. So I will reiterate that with Karen. So from a time frame perspective, um, this new system is going to reduce the time it takes for your money to clear for the checks, Karen? No, at this point, no. Um, what it will do is, you mean, okay, when you say money to clear, explain what you mean. Let me make sure I understand the question. So this this person wants to know, um, you know, in terms of the time it takes for when a check is being issued and deposited in an, another bank, you know, it takes a while for that money to be deposited into the other bank. Meaning, I mean, okay, no, it doesn't take a while. Well, let me, let me try to, try, I mean, I, I think I understand the question. What it take, what happens now is there's a whole place on the check. So the deposit would show up in your account um, and there's a whole place on the check. As of now, the, the, the whole period has not been adjusted. And again, it's because all of the checks in the system are not compliant and we've just gone live. I mean, the intent will be um, as, as a, a, you know, in, in conjunction with the central bank and in consultation with all of the banks to reduce that period. I don't know to what extent and I can't, I can't you know, I can't confirm when. But that will be the intent to reduce that whole period. But as at now, it has not because we've just gone live and, and 
um, there are a lot of non-compliant checks in the system. We can't we can't begin to to to, to derive that benefit right now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I remember you did mention that earlier, and I think that that is something that will take some time. And we are getting this exclusive information now from the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago. And over time, we will definitely see those changes, and we will bring it live here on the show. So we are going to go on a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to uh, answer some questions we have about foreign checks that hopefully Karen can answer for us. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to Straight Off the Bat, a show that helps you understand financial literacy and education. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you are doing so from YouTube, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to continue seeing content that will help you manage your money. Now, today it seems to some people like a boring discussion, but I feel like it's been lit. It's been lit. <laughs> yes, I'm using Gen Z terms because we're discussing uh, what you should know about electronic check clearing. And I think this is definitely a great discussion to have because for some folks, it might be a new venture getting into checking. And for other folks, it could be in collaboration with their online banking. So today we're joined by Karen Tom Yu. She is the general manager of group marketing and communication at RBL. And with over 20 years of experience, we're going to squeeze as much information from her for the next 28 minutes. So let's bring her back in and continue this discussion around electronic check clearing. So um, earlier we would have, you know, shout out to Nefertiti. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly. But she says, thank you for the clarification when it comes to that time frame, because I think she would have missed the discussion we had about holding on to the account when you deposit that check. Um, so we're going to have another question from I, Philip, um, asking, what about foreign checks? Is it that these are already compliant with this electronic system? Great question. Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, at this point, I would, I, I don't want to answer out of turn, but I, I, I have not, in all of the deliberations thus far, and again, it would have been happening ac across the industry and can, in, you know, collaboratively across all of the banks and with central bank, the issue of foreign checks has not featured at all. Um, so I, I would, I would think at this point, no, there would be no change with how, with how the banks process foreign checks. Um, but perhaps we could, um, I don't know, maybe we can, we can, if you can email the question and or send it to the link, we could check and, re and, and get back to you on that one. Great. I think that's um, a great con conversation. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can check over on the comment section if you're on Facebook, where we have the website and you have FAQs when it comes to electronic clearing conversation. So, oh, wow. So there's some more questions. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to just get straight to it because, as I said, it's lit, guys. It's lit. Um, so Lawrence wants to know, um, is electronic check clearing the same as ACH? Um, they're not the same, but they are like hand and glove. So the electronic check clearing system really speaks about the exchange of the checks and the ACH, the automated clearing house system, is the back end system that, that facilitates the, the crediting and debiting between the banks. So they work together but they're not the same. They're different systems. So is this the same system for online banking? No, it's not. It's different. Each bank would have its own um, proprietary online banking system. Um, so no, it isn't. And those systems would, of course, interface with, um, with 
your like again a Republic Bank would interface with your Republic Bank account, but it would use the ACH system would be part of that entire system because remember you can you can transfer from a Republic Bank to another bank, um, and it would be done via that same ACH system. But the online bank okay, is a front end platform specific to your bank. Right. Um, and for those who may not know, uh, what is ACH? What does that stand for? It's an automated clearinghouse solution that, that facilitates um, payments between the banks, electronic payments. So actually, um, there is no there is no need for, I mean, to bring it back to the, to the topic at, under discussion today, um, you can, you can, uh, like, uh, for example, an employee, if you're in business, you can create an ACH file, you access a portal and create a file to, to say credit all of your salaries via, um, via that platform, as opposed to issuing checks to your employees. And that's how the ACH system works. Okay. Um, all right. So thanks again to Lawrence for that question. Oh, wow. Desiree, I didn't even see your question, but clearly we're in sync because she wanted to know what ACH is and we've already answered that question. So we're good to go. Well, uh, so when it comes to this conversation around electronic check clearing, we discuss, you know, um, the benefits of this new system, how this may affect customers within the system. But when it comes to ordering checks, you know, um, if you order a check now, what type of change is it going to bring for that customer? Okay. So if you're ordering a check now, um, and it is the first time that you are, that you are getting, you are getting, um, the new version check, the compliant checks, you will see that the check looks and feels very differently to, to how it did before. It's a little, it's a, it's a little smaller. Most of the checks have become a little smaller. Um, the layout is different. The date format is very, very, very prescriptive to, to ensure that um, dates are entered in a particular manner, day, month, year, consistently. Um, the paper will feel differently because it's a different type of paper that is much more difficult to, to replicate. You know, you don't have access to it readily. Those are the main differences you will see. So it'll be, it'll, it will look a little more standard. So my check will look like your check will look like your check regardless of the bank and the layout will be the same. Okay, great. And uh, I just want you to reiterate because I think this is extremely important because I know you'd have said it, but um, we have some new folks joining us. When it comes to the color of your pens, mm -hmm. can you share the, the importance of that color and why it's important? Yeah. Okay, so historically, I mean, because the checks were, the images were not captured and physical checks were exchanged, um, someone could have completed a check using pink ink or green ink, or if you're into purple, purple ink or whatever as the case may be. Now, because it's the it's a, it's a machine, it's, it's, it's a, a, a scanner, a reader, um, that's gonna be capturing the images of all these checks, it is important that checks are filled out in only blue or black ink. Um, because that's how the, the how the system is set up to, to pick up the checks in the first place. That's a, so that is an additional change. I mean, there aren't that many people that 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 write checks in in you know the full rainbow of colors. But to those that that do, it's important to note that as well. All right. So for all our arts and crafts people, please keep that away from your checks. This is not the time for you to get creative because the person who is issuing that check will be very frustrated if they're not able to deposit it. So reiterating, black or blue guys, just stay in the lines. Uh, and with this discussion around uh, the electronic clearing um, conversation, um, when you are ordering your checks, um, is it that it has to be issued from the bank? Because, I mean, I'm, I've not been in the check system in a while. So people would customize their stuff and send it to the bank. Like how, first of all, how does that work out if somebody wants to customize it? And second of all, um, these checks has to be issued from the bank or is it a stationary that they can reach out to? Oh, no, 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 no. In any event, the checks, regardless of... Um... Regardless of a desire for customization, I mean, if, if that was somebody's 
preference from before or now, you would have had to go to your bank in any event and get your your artwork um, and agree your artwork and your layout, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that that was always the, the case. I mean, what would have happened over the last 18, 18 to 24 months since the banks have been encouraging customers to come in and and, ex and trade change their check format is you would work with customers who have um you know special artwork or as we call them at republic bank specials their own their own check format um to to ensure that going forward there is a there is the opportunity to to allow a customer to maintain um to maintain uh, their own customized check layout, well, not layout, check format and look, perhaps coloring, artwork, whatever, but that the check is still compliant. So that that would have, if anyone wants to do that going forward, that would require a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your bank and and um, and a collaborative approach. All right, again, arts and crafts people, take it down a notch. Can't do that on your checks, okay? I'm speaking to you, just. Stay within the lines and reach out to your bank and ensure that you're compliant with the new electronic check clearance system. Uh, so because we are live and we have a lot of new people joining us over a period of time, I feel like I need you, Karen, to just reiterate about the Canadian Payment uh, Association standards and this format requirement for checks. Okay, sure. So the Canadian Payment Association standard is the internationally accepted gold standard for um, for how checks are issued and how they how they are how they how they how they appear. Um, there are specific dimensions and sizes. Um, so people would would notice that um, all of the banks now the checks are all the same size, same shape. Um, placement of data fields on the checks has been aligned across the banks um, with dates in the same place, um, you know, signatures in the same place, et cetera, et cetera. The date format has been standardized, has been standardized and there are prompts on your checks to ensure and guide persons completing the checks that they, that they, um, that they completed day, month, year. Um, the mandatory serial numbers at the bottom of the checks and you know changes to the paper and several other particular enhanced security features that that are you know perhaps not visible to the untrained eye but that you know that are that are part of the check to, to to really ideally protect customers from fraud and from having checks tampered with whilst in circulation okay and as customers who have no idea why all these things are happening guys just think about you know the fraudulent emails you get all the time it's it's frustrating but it gets worse when it comes to i know someone getting access to your money which we're definitely trying to avoid you need to keep that coin and save it um so just jumping into some of the comments, shout out to Nicole Anna. It is exciting to see a development in the back end systems, which will in the near future provide efficiencies in customers getting funds in their accounts when using checks. Thank you so much for uh, joining our live session today, Nicole Anna. And ooh, we have a question um, from Lawrence, but Lawrence, I'm gonna come back and answer uh that for you right after the break we'll be right back And welcome back to Straight Off The Bat, a show that helps you understand financial literacy and education. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you are doing so from LinkedIn, just, just click that follow button. Trust me, you'll be fine. It'll be great because you'll be continuing seeing content about how to, how to help you manage your money. So today we're discussing what you should know about electronic check clearing with Karen. She is from RBL, Republic Bank Limited. And, you know, 
Let's be honest. It is carnival time. She should have her time off, but she's here with us and we're going to squeeze out a little bit more information from her for the next 15 minutes. So let's bring Karen back in because we have some questions as it relates to electronic check clearing. So we're just going to go right into it with Lawrence as an employer. Do I have to change the checks I have now or can I wait for the batch I have to finish? Great question. Yeah, that's a good question, Lawrence. I mean, I, I would... I don't know who you bank with and every bank is taking a different approach. Um, we are encouraging, we at Republic are encouraging customers to come and exchange the checks at no cost um, as, as early as possible. We've been communicating with our customers over the last year and a half um, through different channels, um, simply because the sooner we get everyone in the country on the same platform, of checks, we'll be able to get more benefits from the from the platform and the efficiencies. What's happening since we've gone live uh, roughly two weeks ago is we're having to run um, hi a hybrid system, right? So we're having to um, we're having to be scanning we're scanning all, but some still have to be exchanged. We're having a high level of rejects depending on um, on on checks being non-compliant, etc. Right? So it, it really is ideal. For you to go into your bank and exchange your checks i mean for the time being i mean the time will come when collaboratively the bankers association in conjunction with, with central bank will say listen as at x date these the old style checks will no longer be valid and will not be be um be accepted um, we're not there yet i mean of course and the industry will be given ample notice of that type of change but the time will come so to your question i mean i don't know how often you write checks um i don't know how you know how many checks you issue at any point in time but it is in your interest to approach your bank to change checks out as soon as you can thanks again for that question lawrence because i think not only is a great question for you but for those who may be watching this after the live show and may have been thinking about it and wanted to ask that question so thanks a lot um, we have another question from I, Philip. Uh, when it comes to uh, fraud, how will this new system mitigate against fraud? Yeah, um, that's a good question. The checks, the check themselves in the new format is a mitigant against check against fraud. The way the checks are laid out, um, the way the checks are, the paper that the checks are used, the security features that are built into the new format checks in and of themselves are uh, mitigants against fraud. Um, and, and the fact that the checks are being run through uh, a scanner that is trained to look for the security features, et cetera, et cetera, which will automatically pick up or have a, a higher chance of picking up um, checks that are not compliant and don't have the security features. So that's the, that is the main approach. Yeah, and I think, um... Same, same way how we're doing uh, things like authentication factors uh, for online is the same way we have to have all these additions when it comes to compliance um, in the analog world. Um, and of course, nothing is 100%, but is there anything as a consumer that I can do better when it comes to writing checks? Um. Okay, so I mean, we had discussed before, but for this, for the for the benefit of any new listeners, I mean, it's important that we know that going forward, um, because again, it's a it's a scanner picking up the checks. Checks need to be filled out in blue ink or black ink. Um, the format of the checks, you know, we are we are encouraging people to stick within the again the check. The checks are a little smaller, so you kind of have to try to if you have big, um, you know, big flowy handwriting, maybe try to keep your not try you're going to have to keep your words and figures within this the the what is slightly reduced size of the um of the of the lines that are now on the checks for completion because again once it starts to spill off it's going to show up as a reject or an irregular item so that that, that those are the kind of tips i would give someone writing checks on the new form checks yeah that's that's i'm hearing you and i'm like that's gonna be so hard because we live in a world now where everybody's doing this and i recently went back to school and i had to write and my handwriting is appalling it's ridiculous and nobody should have to read it uh so i think 
one of the things we put, could possibly do is kind of practice before and then write the check afterwards. I don't know. Just a suggestion. Uh, guys. But, I don't know. <laughs> well, I would also suggest that you sign up for internet banking or mobile and mobile banking so that you don't have to use, you know, your use of checks is that much less. It's a really inconvenient way of, of making payments um, in this day and age. But I mean, I understand that businesses have different needs in particular businesses. Okay, and I think that that's a good segue into my question that I want to tap into your over 20 years of experience. When did you start banking? At 15? 12, 12. <laughs> good call, good call. Uh, so when it comes to what has been happening over the last couple of decades, you know, what is, what is one of the biggest changes you've experienced um, and you've seen when it comes to custom behavior? customer behavior in banking? Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, we, we, we're talking about the electron, electronic check clearing system this morning, but the biggest change, and perhaps maybe certainly the biggest change that has that has lingered post, post pandemic period is the use of electronic payments. Um, so in addition to internet banking and online banking, there are other, you know, Republic Bank has a mobile wallet, NCash, which allows, um, I know, literally allows you to walk everywhere with this, which we generally walk everywhere with anyway. No cash, no nothing, and just pay, you know, just, it's, a, it's QR code based. Um, so there has been a, a massive um, industry wide uptick in the use of electronic payments, which I think is, a, is where the industry needs to go. Um, and, and, you know, you have you do have some customers still preferring to use cash, um, but but I mean I think as time goes on, more and more people will will gravitate towards and and as more and more um, people become comfortable with the technology, they will gravitate towards the use of electronic payments, in particular using your phone, because I mean my argument is always you know people can't use it, but everyone can use a phone, everyone has a smartphone and can use different platforms or the vast majority of, of demographics of customers can do it so if you can manage a cell phone you can use you can use electronic payments it's something that you kind of have to you know make the culture change make the mindset change and liken it to phone use anyone who can use a cell phone can do electronic payments yeah, I always reference my mom because, you know, um, she's of a, definitely of a different era. And when she found YouTube, she was able to use that to learn how to do new things, which was crocheting. And so anytime she comes to me and she's like, oh, I need help on Facebook. I was like, mm, you're the same woman who went online and learned things. You can do this. So I think it's definitely uh, something that it just takes a shift in mindset, but it is happening. Um, so we have uh, another question um, from I, Philip, uh, wanting to know, you know, no worries about the repetitive, repetitive wording, it's fine. Also, what changes will need to be implemented at Vans as it pertains to crossing stamps on checks? Um, I'm not sure, I don't know if you're familiar with this question, Karen, can you answer um, it? Well, I know, I mean, I, I'm not too sure what the, what, um, what, what is what, what the question? If the question is if banks will still have to place a crossing stamp on check, I mean the answer would be as at now, yes, because I mean that is that is proof that the check was taken in by whichever bank. So the crossing the crossing stamp, um, Pauline is is if you if to use our earlier example, if you are at Bank X and you issue a check to me and I bank at Republic Bank, which of course I do. Um, then if I deposit at Republic Bank, there will be a Republic Bank crossing stamp placed on the face of the check. Um, that will continue for the time being. Okay, and I hope that we answer your question there. We want to close off this, this session with an eight ball, Karen. Going to put you in a hot seat. Um, so in this discussion around electronic check clearing, do you have any predictions that you see in the next decade um, of the evolution of this discussion? Um, I mean, really, where, where we would like to see the industry go is, you know, what everyone looks longingly, and everyone who still issues checks, that is, looks longingly at, at, um, at first real ex examples of someone taking a photo of a check um, with their phone, and then you click a button, and you upload it, and it gets deposited straight into your account. 
Um, that is really where we would like to go for the Czech issuing population of, 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 the, of, of the country. Um, it, it, it will have to be done in phases, um, but I, I see that as an, an end goal. Okay, so hopefully we can reference this in 10 years and like, look what she predicted, guys. <laughs> All right. Hopefully it doesn't so, take 10 years. <laughs> yeah, we could be like, yeah, we're a futurist. Um, <laughs> so uh, I feel like her says, yes, thank you. You did answer her question. So um, thanks for that, Karen. And Desiree has a question or a statement, but I think you may have referenced this before, but you know, let's, let's do it again. So considering the, um, and an air quotes inconvenience of making payments with checks would advise persons, would you advise persons to, um, do not have a personal checking account to not bothering opening one and simply sticking to mobile slash online banking. I mean, that's a personal preference. Um, I can tell you, I, if I write one check, the checkbook I have, the checkbook I have in use, I have been using for 19 months, right? I mean, and I'm still maybe, I still have maybe three quarters of the checkbook, um, in my, in my bag. I mean, it's dogged and, and covered in, in, in purse grit, um, <laughs> because I mean, I hardly use it. That's a personal preference. I mean, I personally think, um, I, I see no, I very rarely issue checks, so I don't see the benefit in it, but I do know that there are other reasons persons may want to issue checks. And then people are, at, you know, consumers are at different comfort levels with technology. So, I mean, it's really a personal preference. Checking accounts aren't going to be discontinued, um, but it's really a function of you wanting to have the convenience to remember that I don't have to see you, Desiree, to give you a check and you don't have to see me to get a check and, you know, it's um i i find it a bit of a bother yeah um i can also attest to that because in my business like right now i'm in guatemala um and my company is in trinidad and everyone still gets paid so <laughs> it is because of online banking thank you so much to the bankers association of Trinidad tobago and all its members um so right so on that note i think that let me just make sure that we have all of the questions answered we have some comments but i don't think they're questions uh curtis basically believes that all checks must go <laughs> <laughs> if curtis, this is the, everybody's if not the, like you if this is a curtis mohammed i know from from republic bank thank you curtis and we know we know your views clearly <laughs> Yeah, great. It's not everyone's the same, okay? Some people want to keep writing, right? So, um, but yes, as you mentioned earlier, it depends on the customer needs and what they want. So I think on that note, Karen, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. And I want to give you back your vacation time. So goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great, safe week. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much again for Karen to join us today and sharing insight into electronic tech clearing. Uh, make sure to sign up to be notified about our next live show via the link in the comments. And basically everything we discussed can be viewed in our comment section. Uh, be sure to follow our page on Facebook so you don't miss a single live show. And thank you so much for joining us today. Have a good one. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.